Hi guys, here I'm going to show you how to send emails from within Microsoft Excel. So we're not going to leave the program, nothing like that. And first I'll show you how to do it by hand. And then afterwards I'll show you how to use VBA and macros to automate the process, to send it to lots of different people, add multiple attachments, do lots of cool things. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. First things first, you must have Outlook installed, set up, ready to go, and working. To send emails from Excel, Microsoft Office uses Microsoft Outlook. So make sure that's all good to go. I'm not covering that in this tutorial. Now, once you have that, let's get started. So first things first, let's do it by hand. If you're in a later version of Excel, you've got this little quick access toolbar dude up here. Click the drop down arrow next to it and you get a bunch of options. Click email and you should have a little check mark next to it. And after that, a little email dude right up here. So let's go ahead and click that and see what happens. All right, it's a little off the screen. Let me pull it down. So what happens is it automatically starts to create a new email in Microsoft Outlook. It attaches the current workbook. It gives it a subject. The subject is the title of the current workbook, the entire file name of the current workbook. So basically, it's setting up an email for you so you can now send it. You can now add other people, do everything you would with a regular email. So I'm not going to cover that. You click that little button, you get this window. Now, let's close this dude. Do I want to save my changes? No, thank you. And let's get into the much more exciting stuff. So, with VBA and macros, we can do all sorts of things. We can pull the email address from a cell. We can attach multiple workbooks at once. We can attach this workbook. We can send data from a cell as the subject or body or title or whatever you want. You can do all sorts of cool stuff, and it only requires a few lines of code. So let's get into it. Hit Alt F11. OK, this is the VBA window. And remember to download this workbook so that you don't have to type it all out by hand. And then you can follow along with me. Let's make the text a little bigger. OK, so here for the first iteration of the macro, I'm going to go through a few iterations. We have, let's close this window first, we have the most basic example. And it really only requires a few lines of code. Just this stuff right here. You say where you want to go, so to the subject the body, and then you send it. Everything else is just to set this up. So you can see it's fairly simple. Now let's talk about the stuff around it. This code right here is just boilerplate code. I will quickly cover it. So basically, we need one variable to hold a reference to Microsoft Outlook. That's email application. And we need one variable to hold a reference to the email that we are going to send, and that is email item in this case. Of course, you can name them whatever you want. You just have to change the name everywhere in the macro. Now, once you've declared the variables up here, we go down here and we use them. So email application, we set it to Microsoft Outlook using this line of code down here. And for email item, we set it equal to an email item using this code right here. So the first part references the email application, Microsoft Outlook. And then we do dot create item like this. And that's just a zero in there. Don't worry about it. Just put it in there. <laughs> At the end of the tutorial, I will show you another way to input this code here, a way that you may oftentimes see on the internet. And really, that's the only reason I'm going to show you that way, so that you don't get confused if you say, hey, I've never seen it like this before. What's going on? So I'll explain that at the end of the tutorial. And I will also tell you why you should not be doing that ever, especially if you'll send this workbook out to other people. So now that you got the basic stuff down, you're just going to copy paste this anytime you need to build a macro like this. Let's go ahead and build the email. So it's pretty easy. What you want to do is you want to reference the email item that we created and then tell it what we need to do to the email item. So here we want to change who it goes to or we want to just tell it who it's going to go to. So you just put the email within quotation marks. It is as simple as that. So, 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 so easy. 
Now, what if you want to put two email addresses? Just do a semicolon space email to at test.com. Another one, semicolon, another email. So it's really, really, really easy to do. And in the next example, I'll show you how to add additional recipients with a blind carbon copy and carbon copy. Now the next thing, of course, you want to have a title or a subject. It's called a subject for emails. So email item dot subject, and then you just put your subject here. Whatever you want to put, easy peasy. And then down here, what you want to appear for the body of the email can go right here. And after this, then you just send the email. So you reference our email or the email item and then dot send. Now this automatically sends the email. Nothing will happen in Excel. It's so cool. You just hit, well in this case we click in the macro and hit play or F5 and it's going to send the email. That's it. It's so cool. You don't even have to leave the program. Nothing happens. It doesn't freeze the system. So easy. But there's another way that you can do that. If you don't want to just transparently send the email, we can, so I have two options here. One is to send the email, and the next one is to do what happens when you click the little button to send it by hand, which is display the email. So right here, I have it commented out by default. I'll tell you why in a moment. If we go ahead and uncomment this dude and add a comment here, and then we go to run the macro, what's going to happen is this, let's check it out. I'm gonna hit play. Now we get the email pop-up that we had before, but we see our pre-prepared stuff already in there. So the two has the three email addresses that we popped in there, and then our own subject line and the text for the body of the email. Now here we can send it or do whatever we want with the email. So this doesn't automatically send it. It allows the user to have a bit more flexibility. So they can, you know, I don't know, check names, address book, high importance, low importance, whatever they want to do. So let's close this. We don't want to save the draft. So you have send and you have display. But you do not want to have both of these to run at the same time. Watch when I do this. If we have send and display uncommented, let's run the macro. So it just sent the email, and now we got this error message. The item has been moved or deleted. Yeah, because it's already been sent. So there's nothing to display. The item is gone. The email's gone. I can hit debug, and here's the issue. So let's put a little comment in there. Use this or dot display, but not both together. And then I shall do the same here. Use this or dot send, but not both together. Now, that's it. That's all you need to do, and that's all you really need to take care of. I'm going to comment this out. So right here, simple, easy peasy macro. At the very end of the macro, you don't really have to do this, but it's good practice. Just go ahead and kill the objects that we created, so we set them to nothing. So that's the basic email macro. Now let's start building on that. Next macro is going to stay the same, but we're going to add a couple things. So what we have down here, email item dot two, just like before, but this time we also have a CC and a BCC. So you can see it's very simple, follows the same pattern. You reference your email and then dot, and then what you want to do, here's CC, here's BCC, and just type the email address. We can do multiple email addresses just like in the first example, semicolon space, and then type the next email address. And you can do the same for the blind carbon copy. So in this example, I did take out the dot display. You can still use display. I just didn't want it to be confusing and have too much extra code that we aren't going to be using. So this macro fully works. It'll run, just change the emails as you want. Go ahead and test it out. And it's pretty cool. Remember that carbon copied email addresses are visible to everyone who has been sent this email. Blind carbon copy email addresses will be visible to no one who receives the email. Now let's get to something a little bit more interesting, which is sending attachments. Okay, in the next example, email from Excel attachments. 
okay, everything up here is the same, boilerplate code, we build the email, we send it to someone, we give it a subject and a body, and now, let's say, I'll comment this dude out first, we want to send an attachment. It's so easy. Reference the email item, dot attachments, dot add. Then tell it what you want to add. If you want to add the current workbook, just do this, active workbook dot full name. It is as simple as that. If you want to attach any other file on the computer, it is also very, very simple. Email item dot attachments dot add, and then just the file reference, the full file reference. So we're going to tell Excel where it is on our computer. So the hard drive, then all the directories, and then even the file extension. And note that we can have both of these at the same time. If I comment this dude out right here, only the current workbook will be attached. If I uncomment it, the current workbook and this file down here will be attached. So you can do multiple attachments. It's actually really, really easy. And then after that, we just do dot send. Now, if you want to send lots of attachments at once, maybe you want to allow the user to verify that everything's okay before the email is sent. So maybe this is a good place to put dot display instead of dot send, but it's up to you. And of course, everything else I mentioned in the previous two macros holds true here. You can do CCs, BCCs, multiple email addresses, single email addresses, all sorts of stuff. Now, before I move on to the final example, I want to cover maybe something a bit conceptual. So I said I'm going to show you how to send emails, and you can get the email addresses from the cells and the messages and the subjects and whatever you want from within Excel. But here in these examples, everything is just text between quotation marks. So we are in VBA we can get all of these values from within the workbook itself, from within the worksheet. If you wanted to get this email address from the current worksheet in cell A1, all you would have to do is something, well, I don't even have to go to another place. I could just go right down here, range A1 dot value. So none of this stuff over here has to be hard coded. As long as you send it a text value, it's going to work. So send it a string of emails with a semicolon between each email, it's going to work. Get the subject from a cell, it's going to work. Just because it's here within quotation marks doesn't mean that's how you have to serve it. You could store the value of the text here in a variable and then put the variable here. Pretty much anything you know how to do in VBA and macros as far as getting values from the worksheet, the workbook, and then putting them in macros, you can use here to create a list of email addresses to go down the rows and put them in there, or a list of attachments or different subjects for each user, or put their name in the message. You can do so many things, and I'm not going to cover all those things in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and remove this value. So now that we're clear on that, let's go with the final example. Now, okay, this is basic. All this stuff down here where we build the email is the same. It's the basic email template that I've shown you. But what changes here is the boilerplate code at the top. This is different. And before I continue, remember, this is not a good idea. I do not recommend doing this, but I want to make sure that you see it because you'll see a lot of examples online that use this code. So send email with code hints. And as far as I'm concerned, that's the only practical benefit to doing this is that it could make it a little bit easier to write the macro. The problem with this method is that if I do what we are about to do, which is enable a reference, and then I send this macro to my coworker, and my coworker does not have that reference enabled, as it will not be enabled by default, and they run the macro, they will get an error. So right now it's not enabled. Let me try to run this. I get a lovely little error. User defined type not defined. Great, my macro is broken. It's useless. Okay. If you want to use this method, and then I'll show you how the code hints work, what you have to do is go to Tools, References, and we have to go all the way down to Microsoft Outlook. There's so many things here. Here we go. 
Microsoft Outlook. For me, it says 16. This number will be different depending on your version of Excel. It could be 14, but that doesn't matter so much. Just check next to Microsoft Outlook whatever object library. Okay. Now, let's go down here. Type email item period, and now I have a list of all the things I can do. So it's nice and helpful for creating my macro, but it can cause errors once it's sent to another user. Or if I have this macro and this workbook and it works so nice now, and then I use it for years and years and years, and I get another version of Excel or another computer, and it doesn't work all of a sudden. And then I waste hours trying to figure this out. And it's ridiculous. It's a waste of time. So yes, I can build my macro more easily, but uh, I really do not like this method. Now what changes up here is basically instead of setting the email application as an object, we set it specifically as outlook.application. Same thing for email item. We set it specifically as the mail item for Outlook. And then down here we use ol mail item instead of zero. And this changes a little bit. Basically, it doesn't really matter what changes. You're just going to make a macro that breaks more easily. And that's not cool. <laughs> So that's my opinion of using this method. You may see this online, and if you like that example, that email macro, but you don't want to use the less robust method right up here, in probably every macro, you can pretty much just replace all of this stuff right here with, let's go up, 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 this right here. Change the variable name so they work, but really that's the only difference between this guy and the macro at the end. And that's really all there is for this tutorial. I hope that I have got you started, pointed you in the right direction for being able to build nice, awesome email macros from Microsoft Excel. There are so many things you can do. And the number one takeaway is this is the basic, use this as the framework for building the email, and then make it so that your macros get all of this stuff in a dynamic way. There's really no limits as far as that's concerned. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.